Car Engines Part 3 An Intro for Kids from Sanger Academy Okay, back inside the engine. The pistons are connected to rods, shown here in blue. And the pistons and rods drive the crankshaft around and around. The up and down motion of the pistons changes into the around and around motion of the crankshaft. Isn't that cool? See how it works. The crankshaft is very important. It moves a lot of things in the car. Most importantly, the crankshaft powers the drivetrain, the big system that moves the car's wheels. As the crankshaft goes around and around, or rotates, it moves one or more drive belts. Sometimes there are two belts, including the timing belt, or the timing chain, and the serpentine belt. So there's a belt connected to the crankshaft. So, what do these drive belts do? To explain what the timing belt does, let's look back at the cylinders. Most cars today have four cylinders, and those four cylinders have to work together. The valves, at least two on each cylinder, have to be opened and shut at just the right time. The fuel has to be pulled in at just the right time. And the four cylinders have to be moving in just the right order. Everything has to be timed perfectly. So what makes the valves open and shut at just the right time? It's called the camshaft. So there's a camshaft just by itself and these two things are called cams and they open and shut the valves. The pistons valves are all connected to the camshaft which moves the valves up and down. One set of valves lets the fuel and the air into the cylinders and the other set of valves lets the exhaust out of the cylinders. So, what makes the camshaft move in just the right way? It's called the timing belt or timing chain. The camshaft is connected by the timing belt or chain to the crankshaft. So the timing belt keeps everything running together at the right time. The engine makes a whole lot of heat, especially with all those explosions going on in the cylinders. So how does it stay cool? The serpentine belt is also connected to the crankshaft and it powers a whole bunch of other stuff. So the serpentine belt loops through all those different gears. It drives a big fan called the radiator fan, which sits behind the radiator, which is like a refrigerator for the car. The serpentine belt also runs the water pump, which moves cool water through the radiator. and through the whole engine cooling system. Also, the fan sucks cool air through the radiator and blows it onto the engine, cooling it down. The serpentine belt also drives the alternator, which is like a little generator. That means it makes electricity. It recharges the battery and keeps the, park, the spark plugs sparking. The serpentine belt also drives the oil pump, which moves oil around the engine to keep parts moving smoothly without rubbing too much.
Maybe you don't know what new oil looks like. It looks brownish yellow, like this. Now, as oil runs around an engine, it gets dirty. Then it looks black, like this. Yuck! That's why engines need an oil filter to clean the dirty oil. And every 3,000 or 5,000 miles, the oil needs to be changed. Where does the oil go when it's not used? In the oil pan, which is located beneath the engine. So that's where you go to empty the old oil. So the oil pan is down here underneath the vehicle and here comes the used oil. Finally, let's talk a little about how the crankshaft moves the car's wheels. At one end of the crankshaft is a big heavy gear called the flywheel. When the engine is running, the flywheel is constantly spinning. Now, what happens next depends on what kind of car you have. There are two kinds, manual transmission, sometimes called stick shift, and automatic transmission. Many older cars had a manual transmission, which means drivers have to move a gear stick. And a clutch pedal. in order to put the car into lower or higher gears. This is called shifting. When the driver shifts, this moves the clutch disc. But that's manual transmission. Most new cars are automatics. This means they shift themselves. Cars with automatic transmissions don't have clutch plates. Instead, they have torque converters. So here's a cutaway model of a torque converter. The crankshaft's energy is passed along to the transmission, also called the gearbox. It's a lot of gears. And here's a cutaway view of a transmission. Very complicated. But now we're past the engine, and this video is just about car engines, so we'll stop there. There's a lot to a car engine, isn't there? It's very complicated, but maybe you understand it a little better now. The End